Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. Do you know, 35 years ago, I went to speak uh, in a place called Wollongong in Australia, and uh, it was called the Snake Pit Stadium, and it was a basketball stadium. And uh, there were lots of people in there, and there was this little teeny bopper, little girl, right at the back with her girlfriends, and, and I preached the gospel. I basically explained the essence of Christianity, and uh, this young girl, age 12, came down and made a decision that redirected her destiny, and that's Pastor Leanne. Yeah. And, it, you know, I'm, I, I'm ever so fond of Leanne because when, when you're a link in someone's journey of faith, uh, it just warms your own heart that I was a little link. I just, little link. And then later on, God used other links in her life and so on. And uh, we just admire her and Pastor Jurgen uh, for being, hearing God's call, being adventurous and not, not just moving to another country, moving to another continent. Oh, my word. And uh, just to be here uh, is just wonderful. People frequently ask me, J. John, what do you do? And that's always very difficult to know what to say. Because if I say that I'm a reverend, which I am, you know, that conjures up images in people's minds as to what I might be. And, uh, and sometimes I say to people, oh, you know, I'm a priest. And then they look at me and they look at my wife. Well, how does that work? And... Um, <laughs> You know, so if I say to people that I'm an evangelist, people think, oh, he's like this. So I like to be creative in telling people what I do. I sat next to this lady on an airplane in London, and uh, I said, oh, hello. And she goes, oh, hello. And I, I said, where are you going? She said, I'm going to Singapore. Then she said to me, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Australia. I said, what do you do? So she told me. Then she said, what do you do? And I said, well... <laughs> I work for a global enterprise. She said, do you? I said, yes, I do. I said, we've got outlets in nearly every country of the world. She goes, have you? I said, yes, we have. I said, we've got orphanages. We have feeding programs. We've got schools, colleges, universities. We do justice work, reconciliation work, marriage work. I said, basically, we look after people from birth to death, and we deal in the area of behavioral alteration. <laughs> I mean, she went, wow! I mean, honestly, it was so loud, people turned around and looked at us on the aeroplane. She goes, what's it called? I said, it's called The Church. Have you heard of it? You know, when you're a Christian, you're part of this global enterprise. Not only is it global, it's intergalactic because it includes everyone that's gone ahead of us. And it's like, wow, I'm part of this global enterprise that is actually transforming the world. And so what I do and what my wife and I do is that we try and teach people the essence, the values, the principles of Christianity, spoken and also written. And I've written a few uh, books to help people in their journey of faith. Ten children. I asked ten children to send me all their questions. And uh, they sent me loads. And uh, I mean loads. And I, I chose 30 of their questions. And I tried to answer those questions for children. Just very simply, um, without being simplistic. Yeah? And, uh, I mean, it, it, it's very interesting, isn't it? We often say to children, grow up, <laughs> don't we? Uh, but Jesus said to adults, unless we become like little children. <laughs> That's an interesting one, isn't it? And uh, during lockdown in England, I wrote this book, uh, Will I Be Fat in Heaven? <laughs> 
Yeah, because, you know, I'm at the age now where, you know, you pick up furniture disease, that's when your chest falls into your drawers. And uh, <laughs> so basically, I took 38 questions, 38 questions. People say, how long did it take you to write? And I say 42 years, because I've been thinking about these questions for 42 years. And, uh, you know, questions like, well, what am I going to look like in heaven? You know, am I actually going to recognize my wife? And what's it going to be like? And why do bad things happen to good people? Do all religions lead to God? What happens uh, after an abortion? There's a life. But does that life go to heaven? How does that work? So I took 38 questions, and I tried to answer those questions there. And this is another children's book, How Can I Pray? And then this, um, I wrote 50 profiles of 50 Christians from all walks of life, all different cultures, and I just told their stories. And it honestly, it gave me an absolute faith lift, uh, just reading their stories uh, to inspire. Um, so there, there's, there's a few uh, books, and these are available in the foyer afterwards. And uh, my wife and I will be in the foyer if you want to me to sign any of those. My friend Greg Morrow's here. I want to give all those to him. Can you give those? to him he's I my wife and I were at the legacy center this week oh my word talk about being blown away if you've not been to the legacy center you really I mean we're from London and we've been to the legacy center so you cannot say you live in San Diego and you haven't been to the legacy center you've got to go honestly now let's get back to the story I, so I talked to this woman on an airplane okay and then we begin to talk. It becomes very obvious within a few minutes that her understanding of Christianity was a misunderstanding. Wow. And I think that is true today for so many people. Their understanding of Christianity is a misunderstanding. And that's why it's very important for us to understand what we believe, why we believe it. And... Um, Pastor Matt and Pastor Michaela asked me this morning to explain to you what Christianity is. So I'm going to explain this now, okay? When I conclude in around 30 minutes, if you would like to begin this journey of faith of following Jesus, or you don't know whether you've ever begun the journey, or you used to follow Jesus, I'm going to ask you, begin today a new day in your life in following Jesus. And if you want to do that, I'm going to ask you to get up out of your seat, out of the rows, come down the aisles, and I'm going to ask you to come and stand here at the front. Now, the reason I'm telling you now that you're, I'm going to ask you to do that is so that in 30 minutes' time, when I do tell you, you're not surprised. Okay? So, so sit back now. Just enjoy it. 30 minutes' time, you're going to come down here. Right? <laughs> Now, what is, what is Christianity? Okay, there's, there's a one verse in the Bible in one of the Gospels. There are four Gospels in the Bible that, that reveal to us the life and the teaching of Jesus Christ. And in one of those Gospels, John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16, it, it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, that one, one verse, it, it sums up the essence of Christianity. Christianity is an invitation. Now, if you're anything like me, you appreciate invitations. I mean, even if you, you can't go, you think, oh, that was really nice they thought of us, isn't it? That was, that was nice. Now, when you get an invitation to a wedding or something like a wedding, you get the card, you get the letters at the bottom, RSVP. What do they stand for? There was a, a professor um, from another country in England for a semester with his wife. While they were there, they received the wedding invitation. Bottom of the card, RSVP. Now, they didn't have that code back in their country. So the professor was trying to crack the code. And then he says to his wife, yes, his wife says, what? He said, RSVP, remember some wedding present. 
Now, you see, the professor thought it was a demand, but the truth was it was an offer. RSVP is French. It stands for Respondez, s'il vous plaît, which basically means, are you going to come? <laughs> and people put a date. So if you don't reply by the date, you can't go. <laughs> Now, you and I are all being offered today the Christian invitation. Wow. Will we be offered it tomorrow? Don't know. You're going, what do you mean you don't know? Well, I actually don't know. You're going, well, why don't you know? Listen, none of us know whether we're going to be alive tomorrow. That's why it's very important to reply to the invitation while you're still alive. Okay, now when you get an invitation, there are three things you want to know. One, who's it from? Two, who is it to? Three, what is it about? Okay, let's answer those three questions. Right, who's it from? Back to the verse, for God. Let's start there, for God. God, G-O-D. Okay, G-O-D, what does that mean? What does G-O-D mean? Interesting, when the first Russian astronaut returned from space, first interview, first question, did you see God? No, I did not, he said. The Soviet Union heralded this as proof that God did not exist. When the first American astronaut returned from space, first interview, fourth question, did you see God? He said, I would have seen God had I stepped out of my space suit. <laughs> I mean, don't you love that? That's so cool, isn't it? What a great answer. You see, the Russian and the American had two different understandings of the word God. Yeah. Now, I, I've, I've spoken in 102 universities around the world, and I've been in debates with professors and students and taking questions. And, oh, I, I can honestly say, in, in probably all 102 universities, uh, I've been... You prove to me God exists. It's like, oh, you know. And they say it in such a manner as if, oh, I've never thought about that. Oh, whoa, I've never thought about that. But you see, when people say things like that, when they, they don't really understand. You see, look, there are three types of knowledge today. Okay, mathematical knowledge is rational, logical knowledge. Yeah, five plus five equals 10. Then you have scientific knowledge where you have a hypothesis, carry out an experiment to see if it's true or false. And then you have personal knowledge. Now, each of those knowledge is equally valid. What a lot of people do is they take what is personal, but they want to define it mathematically or scientifically. Wow. So for example, let's take something like a kiss. Would you agree with me the kiss is personal? Yeah. 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 Is it, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, some of you have not had one. <laughs> you know. And I am sure Awakened Church can arrange one for you. Yeah. Right. For those of us that have had one, we know it is very personal. Can you define a kiss mathematically? No, you can't. Can you define a kiss scientifically? Yes, you can. Here is a definition of a kiss scientifically. It is the approach of two pairs of lips with a reciprocal transmission of microbes and carbon dioxide. <laughs> wow. Now, you put yourself in a very romantic setting. There you are, yes, and it's all romantic, it's lovely, it's candlelit. And then you say, let us draw our lips together and let us exchange microbes and carbon dioxide. <laughs> it's not gonna do it. You see, that's what a lot of people do when it comes to God. You, yeah, you do not prove God, you experience God. <laughs> You see, that's why at Awakened Church, we just spent like 30 minutes experiencing God. You experience him. Too many people today ask the wrong questions. If you ask the wrong question, you can never get the right answer. The right question to ask is, has God spoken? Wow. Yes. In another book of the Bible, a book called Romans, it says God spoke 
through creation. So the whole of creation is crying out to get our attention. God has spoken through history. But God's greatest revelation of himself for all people, for all times, for all cultures, was in Jesus Christ. The invisible God became visible in Jesus. The intangible God became tangible in Jesus. The unknowable God became noble in Jesus. Jesus is the one who issues you and me with an invitation. Who? You and me. Why? For God so loved the world. That's you and me. Whoever we are, we're all being given an invitation. All right, okay. What's it all about? Well, the Bible. There's 800,000 words in it. What's that all about? It's only about three things. Three things. Everything else is commentary and application on these three principles. One, forgiveness from the past. Do you agree with the following statement? There are problems in the world today. Do you agree with that? Of course there are. There are problems globally. There are problems socially. There are problems domestically. There are problems personally. Now, many people in the world, governments, charities, social agencies, what are they trying to do? They're trying to alleviate the symptoms. But if you try and work with symptoms, you're always going to have the symptoms unless you deal with the root cause. So the big question is, what is the root cause of everything that's wrong in the world today? I love the story of the mother who said to her husband, oh, darling, I need to get on. Look after Annie for me, their little girl. He said, yes, of course. He thought, what could he do to occupy his little daughter? Flicking through a magazine, he sees a map of the world. He says, Annie, watch what I'm going to do. He cut the map of the world into small squares. He muddled the squares on the floor. He says, Annie, put the squares back together again like a puzzle to make the map of the world. So he thought, well, that'll keep her busy. A couple of minutes later, daddy, daddy, I've done it and he thought well you know she couldn't really have done it but let me have a look went and had a look all the squares were put in exactly the right place Annie how did you know where to put all the squares ah she said when you were cutting the map out I looked on the other side and I saw a picture of a man and a woman and I thought if I could put the man and the woman back together again I could put the world back together again you see The heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. That's what's the problem. The heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. We all have a heart disease. We all have a heart dis-ease. And it's out of the heart. And now, if we go back to the original script the Bible, the word for it is sin. That's the word for it. But it's basically saying we've got a diseased heart. Now let me illustrate it for you in a slightly different way. Just imagine you passed out of this life now. You woke up in a theater, sitting there on your own. The doors open, an angel flies in, comes up to you and says, welcome to the theater of judgment. Relax. There on the screen you see your life. Everything you ever did here on earth, everything you ever said, everything you ever thought, you see it on the screen. At the end of the film as you're recovering, (laughs) the angel comes back and says, relax, there's gonna be a second showing. All the people that were featured in the film of your life are all waiting outside. We're just gonna let them in to view your life a second time. How would you feel if your life were judged on that basis? That is exactly how God judges us. But he does it in an instant. I don't know about you. Me, I would not want a private viewing, let alone a public viewing of my life. I honestly do not need convincing that I have thought, said, done things that I shouldn't, and there are things I should have done, but I didn't do. They're called the sins of omission. So there's the sins of commission, and there's the sins of omission. And a lot of people think, oh, well, it is what it is. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does matter. All that stuff disconnects us from God. 
And it works like an, a bit like an overdraft in a bank account. If you have an overdraft and I have an overdraft, you can't help me, I can't help you. The only one who can help us is someone in credit. Jesus Christ was the only one in credit. That is why Jesus came into this world to do something for us. Kelly and I, we got three sons. When our first born son, Michael, was about four, he and I went to buy his mum a Mother's Day present. So we're going around the stores. We walk into one store. As we walk in, a gigantic poster board right in front of us as you walked in, and it said, do not touch. All breakages must be purchased. Why didn't I just walk out? I mean, not only because I had a four-year-old, but I know what I'm like. I'm occasionally, I'm a bit clumsy. You know what I mean? I know I'm a bit clumsy. And then I kind of walk, and then I knock, oh, you know. So why didn't I just walk out? Anyway, we didn't walk out. We're in there, and I, I saw it from the corner of my eye as Michael knocked something over. And it was like slow motion as it fell. Like, no, and then, psh. The manager, I didn't know where he came from, he stood there and he pointed to the sign. He didn't speak, just pointed to the sign. And I said, I didn't do it, he did it, he did it. And I thought, why don't I just walk out and let Michael pay for the damages? I didn't do it, he did it. He can pay. Look, there's no way that four-year-old Michael was going to be, be able to pay for the damages. Only his daddy could pay for the damages. You and I cannot pay for the damages. We can't pay for them. That's why Jesus came to pay for the damages. And he paid for it on the nail so that you and I could be forgiven. And it says in the Bible that he purchased for us forgiveness. You and I can have forgiveness from the past. A very eminent psychiatrist said, I could, I could dismiss 90% of my patients if they could be assured of forgiveness. What is it that we need? We need forgiveness, but only Jesus can give us forgiveness. No one can give us forgiveness. Only he can give us forgiveness. I, I became a Christian when I was a student in London in 1975, and it transformed my life. My mother said, you're brainwashed. I said, mom, my brain has been washed. If you only knew, mother, what was in my brain, you'd be pleased it got washed. You know, I, I, I went to give a whole series of lectures at Oxford University, and this student comes up to me after the final lecture. I mean, I must have given 10 lectures. And then he goes, oh, Mr. John, I really enjoyed your lectures. And I said, oh, thank you. And he said, but personally, I believe Christianity is a crutch. And I looked at him and I thought, I hope you break your legs. <laughs> No, listen, it's one of those moments where you have a little bubble, you know, you just... And then, I re, and then I rephrased it. I rephrased it, and I said, listen, if you broke both of your legs, would you appreciate the wheelchair to get around? He said, yes, I would. I said, if you broke one leg, would you appreciate the use of crutches to get around? He said, yes, I would. I said, well, I, I'm a broken person. Oh, wow. So are you. I, I've never met a person who isn't broken. Yeah. And, and I'm so pleased I can lean on Jesus while he's putting me back together again. Yeah. Listen, honestly, every single one of us in this beautiful auditorium, every single one of you that's tuned in, we are broken people. Yeah. And we can only be healed in the broken body of Jesus. Nothing else will heal us. The only thing that will heal us is the broken 
body of Jesus. You and I are being offered forgiveness from the past, but not only forgiveness from the past, we are being offered new life today. New life today. Not just pie in the sky when we die, but steak on a plate while we wait. (laughs) We're experiencing new life today. The word Christian has got the word Christ in it. And if you remove the word Christ from the word Christian, you're left with I-A-N. Ian isn't going to help you. (laughs) Now, I'm not saying Ian isn't a nice guy. I'm sure he's a nice guy. But he's not going to change your destiny. It's like, you know, I, I, I meet so many people who, who call themselves Christians uh, and they have absolutely no connection to Christ. Wow. Yeah, yeah. If you're a Christian, that means you're connected to Christ. That's what it means. I'm connected to Christ. Now, think of your life for a moment like a car, okay? The car of your life, okay? Just work with me with this, okay? So to be a Christian, using that analogy means Christ is in the car, and now, some of you might be here today and you're thinking, oh, no, I don't think he is. I don't think he is. Well, that's why you're here today. We want to give you that opportunity in a few minutes to say, I do want you in my life. I do want you in my car. Now, for the majority of us, look, Christ is in the car. Of course, he's in the car. Okay, the big question is, where is he? In the car. Do you drive your car to church? unlock the trunk, get Jesus out for religious happy hour. Yeah? At the, end of the, at the end of the service, get back in there. It's like no one, no one the rest of the week would know. They would not know. It's like you have this little Sunday morning, you know, little hour, happy hour, that's your bit. Others of you are going, no, 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 he's in the car. Oh, great, he's in the car. What, on the back seat? Bit of a passenger. You're going, no, 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 in the front. What do you mean? The front passenger seat? Bit of a companion? Still a passenger. Or is he in the driving seat of the car of your life? Now, everyone here, if you thought he's in the driving seat of the car of my life, I've got one more question for you. Are you a back seat driver? (laughs) The car gets to an intersection. Jesus turns left. Where are you going? I'm going down the road of forgiveness. Oh, oh, I I don't want to go down that road. I don't want to go. I'm Greek. I'm Greek. My mother is a travel agent for guilt trips. I know what that's like. Oh, you get to another intersection. Jesus turns right. Where are you going? I'm going down the road of generosity. Oh, I don't want to be generous. You know, many people haven't heard the sermon on the amount. It's very easy to say he's in the driving seat. How do we know he's in the driving seat? How do we know he's first in our lives? Ask five questions, F-I-R-S-T, five questions. Is he first in my finances? I, is he first in my interests? R, is he first in my relationships? Yeah, and that one, I didn't get that one. I sometimes don't get that one. Right, you got a married couple, husband, wife, Christian, Christian. Okay, so husband loves Jesus, the wife loves Jesus. Well, if the husband loves Jesus and the wife loves Jesus, how can Jesus fight Jesus? (laughs) Jesus wouldn't fight Jesus. Is he first in our relationships? S, is he first in our schedule? Is he first? You see, we tune the instruments before the orchestra plays. You don't tune the instruments afterwards. T, is he first in our troubles? What do I do when I'm troubled? What do I do when it's dark? Do I I look at the stars? 
He's the morning star. So if I can say that he's first in my finances, interests, relationships, schedule, troubles, that's a really good sign that he's first. But if I can't say that, it's probably an indicator you've got a little red light flashing in your dashboard in your car to say, wait a minute, something's not right. You've got to realign the wheels. You've got to put new tires. You've got to do an oil change. You've got to fill, the, fill it with gas. Well, in fact, you're so broken you need a new engine. When you've got him in the driving seat, by the, his spirit, called the Holy Spirit, that will reside in you in the driving seat, you will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And now, here's another indicator. How long have you been a follower of Jesus? How fruity are you? Yeah? Because if you're lacking any of this fruit, it means there's a blockage. So listen, some of you this morning... You need to say, I want you in my life. Come into the car of my life. Others of you this morning, whether you're here in the auditorium or you're tuning in or you're hearing this message at a later time, what you need to do is to reposition Jesus. And if you're here in the auditorium, I'm going to ask you too to get up out of your seat, out of the rows. Come and say, I need to reposition Jesus into the driving seat. And I want to put him first, F-I-R-S-T. Forgiveness from the past, new life here today. Thirdly, a hope for the future. Back to our verse. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, so whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, we can have a hope for the future. Do you know that a lot of people's hope today is a bit like a hospital gown? You're usually not as well covered as you think you are. <laughs> you know, I do. I meet people like that all the time. People who are going to, I hope so. You know, I hope so. I went to get my hair cut, and I, I noticed that the hairdresser had her keys in front of me by the mirror. And, uh, and on her keys, uh, her key ring was a rabbit's foot. I said to her, why, why do you have a rabbit's foot on your key ring? Oh, she says, that's to bring me good luck. I said, but the rabbit wasn't lucky. <laughs> I said, how can an unlucky rabbit bring you any luck? She goes, I didn't think of that. (laughs) She bent down. She got the rabbit's foot off. She chucked it in the bin. We started to talk about superstition. And then I said, my wife and I, we run. We run a class in our home called Agnostics Anonymous. Do you want to come? (laughs) She said, can I bring my husband? I said, of course you can. And they found faith. But you see, the point is this, the point is this. You know, I'm not going to trust a little stinking rabbit foot. I'm going to trust Jesus. 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 That's who I'm going to trust. Please stand. What is, what is Christianity? It's an invitation. Who's it from? Jesus. Who's it to? You and me. You know, when, when we've accepted the invitation and we've, we've got him in the driving seat, you and I become the invitation. We become the invitation. Wherever we go, we carry his presence. We are the invitation to other people. We are his representative. We are his ambassador. You know that there are two reasons today why people are not yet Christians? One, they've never met a Christian. Two, they have met a Christian. (laughs) They're the two reasons. Some people create happiness wherever they go. And some people create happiness whenever they go. (laughs) 
Be one of these people that creates happiness wherever you go. Don't be like Arctic rivers, frozen at the mouth. Don't be like three disciples who took literally what Jesus said, see that you tell no one. Share it with others. Some of you haven't yet invited him in. In just a moment, whether you're here in the auditorium, whether you're tuned in, invite him in. For those of you in the auditorium, I'm going to ask you in a moment, make your way out of the rows, come down the aisles, come and stand here at the front. If you brought a guest in a moment, turn to your guest and say, hey, do you want to come? Do you want me to accompany you? That's fine. Absolutely fine. Now, listen, I'm not, I'm not doing this and... Uh, the church isn't, the pastors aren't, we're not doing this to embarrass you, honestly. Do you know one of the reasons I'm doing it is because I want you to stand up here amongst hundreds of Christians because if you can't stand up in church amongst hundreds of Christians, you'll never be able to stand up outside. I want you to stand up here so that tomorrow you can stand up out there. And I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than stand with the world and be judged by God. Some of you need to reposition Jesus. Well, look, what a, what a morning to do that. Some of you, you know, hey, goodness, I don't know how it's happened. But I think I need to reposition Jesus and put him in the driving seat. When you've all come out here to the front, I'm going to pray a prayer. I'm going to ask you to pray the prayer. If you're tuned in, I'm going to ask you to pray that prayer with us. Once you've prayed the prayer, I will say a prayer for you. And then the church, they're going to give you a a new Bible. Oh, I love new Bibles. You may already have one. We'll have another one. And they're going to pray with you and just encourage you on the journey. That's what we're going to do. Just close your eyes just for a moment. If you're tuned in, if you can, if you're not driving and you're in another place where you can just like, hey, I can just pause for a moment. Just pause. If you want to receive Christ, if you want to begin this journey, if you want to come back, if you want to reposition Jesus, here's your moment. Please come. Come now. Out of the rows. If you brought a guest, ask your guest. Come down now. Come on. Come. 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 Come on down. Come on down. Come on. Come on out. Well done. Well done. Well done. Keep coming. Come on. Come on down. Come on down. Come. Come on. Come on down. Great. Great. Wonderful. 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 Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Beautiful. Keep coming. Great. Great. Oh, it's it's so good. Well done. Keep coming. Keep coming. Do you know uh, why people are applauding? Well, it says in the Bible, every time we say yes, Jesus, I mean, I, I get choked. The, it, it, the good book says that heaven rejoices. Whoa! I mean, that's why we're trying to rejoice with heaven. <laughs> I mean, just close your eyes. 
I'm going to pray a prayer. I will pray this prayer phrase by phrase. I pray it once so you know the words. The second time I pray the prayer, pray the prayer out loud with me. Everyone else, please join in and reaffirm your faith and pray the prayer. If you're tuned in, if you can pause whatever it is you're doing, pray the prayer. Maybe if you were sitting down, stand up. Maybe if you were standing up, kneel, do something to say, I'm praying this prayer. Here's the prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for your invitation. Thank you, Jesus, for your invitation. I come to you just as I am. I come to you just as I am. I know I have done many things wrong. I know I have done many things wrong. And I thank you for dying on the cross for me. And I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Cleanse my life. Cleanse my life. Set me free from the past. Set me free from the past. I invite you into the driving seat of my life. I invite you into the driving seat of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I choose to put you first in my life. I choose to put you first in my life. Help me from this day on. Help me from this day on to build my life on you. To build my life on you. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Amen. A prayer for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce and I pronounce his forgiveness. May you know his cleansing. May you be set free from the past. May you know his presence, his peace, his power. And we pray for you and all of us that we would know his protection. We pray for the blessing of God upon our lives, the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Bless us that we can be a blessing to others. For your glory we pray. Amen. Wow, what an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.